Leaving the Oban area, we drove north along Loch Lenny to the village of Glencoe and then took a detour to the east up the beautiful Glencoe Valley. And this valley portrays the essence of the Scottish Highlands. It teems with waterfalls and craggy mountains and is well worth the extra time to drive. It also played a bloody role in Scottish history. In 1692, government forces led by a Campbell commander were extended hospitality by the MacDonald clan for 12 days. On the morning of February 13th, the soldiers rose up and killed their host because the MacDonald clan leader was a little late in swearing allegiance to the British monarch. 38 men were killed outright and 40 villagers died from exposure while fleeing from the soldiers. This valley has been used as a setting in such films as Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Highlander, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and the James Bond film Skyfall. Returning to the village of Glencoe, we continued northward to the famous Loch Ness and Urquhart Castle. Loch Ness is the second largest lake in England measured by surface area, but the largest lake by volume, reaching a depth of 755 feet. It contains more fresh water than all other lakes in England and Wales combined. But its biggest claim to fame is Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. We drove the entire length of the lake and failed to catch a glimpse. While there is some evidence that an earlier fortification occupied this site from the 5th century, the first record of Urquhart Castle is in 1296 when Edward I captured it. The castle is located on Strone Point along the northwest shore of Loch Ness and has commanding views over most of the lake. The castle is arranged in a figure eight with two baileys. The nether bailey lies at a lower elevation to the north and the upper bailey lies at a higher elevation to the south with dimensions of 492 by 151 feet. Urquhart is one of the larger castles in Scotland. The oldest part of the castle is the higher southern section called the Upper Bailey. It dates from the 13th century. The newest part of the castle is the lower northern section called the Nether Bailey. It contains the Tower Keep, a great hall, residence chambers for the owner, kitchens, and a chapel. With commanding views of Loch Ness, it was fun to wander these ruins keeping a constant watch over the waters of the loch for Nessie. On April 16, 1746, a Catholic army led by Bonnie Prince Charles was defeated by a Protestant army of royalists, thus ending the Stuart dynasty and beginning the Hanover dynasty in England. 
The Jacobite army suffered about 3,000 casualties, while the government forces suffered only about 300 casualties. The battlefield has trails throughout, with stone markers indicating the burial locations of different Scottish clans. The Clava Corns are burial mounds constructed in the Bronze Age, 3,000 to 4,000 years ago. There are about 70 of these structures near Inverness in northern Scotland. At this location in Balnorin, there were three such structures. The burial chambers seem to have been constructed for one person. The entrances always face southwest towards the setting point of the winter sun. Each burial corn is surrounded by a circle of upright stones. They line up with the summer solstice. These are uniquely different burial mounds from what we have seen in other locations. Leaving the Inverness area, we headed southeast to the village of Carbridge, where we stayed in an excellent bed and breakfast. The most famous landmark in the village of Carbridge is the old Packhorse Bridge from which the village is named. Built in 1717, it is the oldest stone bridge in the Highlands. Severely damaged in an 1829 flood, it no longer can support pedestrian traffic. <laughs> 